Today, we're going to be introducing the Wingate test. Uh, if your students have talked to you about this before, you maybe have heard some concerns about how difficult it is, just stress and anxiety that comes with it. But don't worry, just let them know that you're going to walk them through each thing step by step with the procedures, with how the test is doing, how the test works, as well as minimizing any stress and anxiety they may have. The best way to do this is by prepping your student with just the protocols, making sure that they have all their questions answered as well. Aside from that, just making sure that they feel good, both physically and mentally, knowing that they can complete the Wingate test, and overall just making sure that your participant, whoever they may be, is ready to go prior to the test. So the first objective is to understand the procedures and protocols for the Wingate test. Second one is to be able to demonstrate the PC or possible creating system and the glycolytic system as well. We're going to see them both inactive when doing the Wingate test. Number three, have your students apply critical thinking and teamwork skills throughout the procedures and protocols. And number four, demonstrate the application of why we do the Wingate test and how it can apply to their future career field in the health and wellness field. Okay? Okay, perfect. So now we have our stationary bike. Okay? Make sure the stationary bike is adjusted to the appropriate seat for the participant. Okay? To do that, you're going to go ahead and loosen this up a little bit. And then from there, you can adjust it higher or lower. Okay? So, make sure the participant has some time to adjust the bike and get a feel for the appropriate height. Okay? In addition, we have our scale here. Make sure the scale is attached to the bike as well, because that's where we'll be putting the actual weight on to do the wing gate test. Okay? So you have your weight scales here. You're gonna go ahead and put them on the scale. And you're gonna put on the appropriate amount of weight depending on the weight of the participant. All right? Along with that, you wanna make sure, just for safety precautions, have a trash can on standby, okay? It's very rare, but you wanna be transparent with your students and let them know that there's a small possibility, depending again on training status, eating status as well, they may feel sick afterwards. Okay, it's rare, but be transparent with them, let them know that this is here for them in case they need it. But again, it's extremely rare for that to happen. But on the off chance that it does, you have a trash can right here for them after the test, okay? Okay, so now that we have the procedures done, we know exactly how to set up the bike, then we wanna make sure our participant knows what to expect, okay? Ideally, you wanna have your participant selected the week prior to in order to let them know exactly what they're going to be expecting for the Wingate test, all right? Answer any other questions that they may have, okay? The Wingate test may cause some anxiety and stress, but if you answer their questions and let them know you're here to support them, then that can minimize any stress or anxiety they may have, okay? Let them know not to eat a heavy meal at least an hour and a half to two hours prior to the Wingate test. Let them know to stay hydrated as well, okay? And also let them know to get appropriate amount of sleep, all right? So make sure you answer all those questions, make sure they feel good physically, emotionally as well, okay? Because you want to make sure that they have all the information they need to successfully complete the test as well as to feel good in the setting itself, right? Because the overall goal here is to make sure that all of our students feel good and welcome within the lab procedures and they feel supported throughout each of the labs that we do. Okay, awesome. So now we have our volunteer for the Wingate test, okay? In addition to that, we need a couple more volunteers, all right? We need one to be a counter, which pretty much is gonna count the number of revolutions each time the individual bikes, okay? So that's one volunteer there. Second volunteer is gonna be our timer. Our timer is really important because our timer will be in contact with the counter to make sure that they know what the number is for each five second interval, okay? In addition to that, we need a scribe. Okay, so the scribe is going to be the individual writing down each number of revolutions per five second interval. Okay? Now, everybody else, as you see how the chairs that are set up, everybody else is also going to help the scribe as well. Okay? This is where the collaboration and critical thinking skills come into play. If for some reason the counter yells out a number and the scribe can't hear that number, it's the responsibility and the job of the other students to repeat that number to the scribe in order to ensure 
that they have an accurate number for each five second revolution. Okay? The worst case scenario here is if the scribe misses the number and the numbers do not add up the way we want them to, then unfortunately we have to do the Wendy test again and we do not want to do that twice. Okay? So make sure you have your volunteers for each specific category. All right? Then do one practice round with myself on the bike for that 30 second interval of time to make sure everybody feels good, everybody knows what to do, the counter feels good, the timer feels good, the scribe feels good as well, and the other students as well know exactly what to do. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and have the timer start the time. Once they say go, I'm gonna bike for a 30 second time frame. The counter will count the number of revolutions. The scribe will write them down. The timer will let them know each five second interval time. And the other students will repeat the number that the counter says. Okay? So I do this for one practice round in order to make sure that everybody feels good and ready to go. All right? A couple things here. We need the individual's body weight in kilograms and we need the workload. To calculate the workload, we take 7.5% of the overall body weight. Okay, in this case, we did the math here. So now that we have the workload, we want to walk over here and set up the scale with the appropriate workload for the participant. Okay, so now our participant is going to go ahead and do the 30 second wing gate test. I informed him with all the protocols, I answered all these questions as well. So, do you feel good? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the scale here. And then I'm going to go ahead and have you go ahead and just bike a little bit here. And then I'm going to cut you down to, from three to one, okay? Okay. So, at one, you're going to go ahead and bike as fast as you can, okay? Okay. Once you do that, I'm going to drop the weight and you're going to bike for a 30 second interval. Okay. Okay? Yep. So, Go ahead. Three, two, one. Bike, 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 essential to have a cool down, okay? That's a very, very essential for the wing gate test. So at this point, you're gonna go ahead and cool down for about a minute or two. I'm gonna remove the weight from the scale. And then, that is the wing gate test. We reached the first objective. Second objective is our other category, right? We want to make sure they understand what happened with the phosphocreatine system and when did the glycolytic pathway kick in, right? So have them look at the number of revolutions and have them tell you specifically at what point was the phosphocreatine system completely depleted and at what point did the glycolytic pathway kick in, okay? In this case, looking at the numbers here, we see that the highest number of revolutions was at the first five second interval. So if that's the case, that means the phosphocreatine system is completely depleted within that first five second interval. As we go along, we see the revolutions decrease pretty linearly up until you get to the very last five second interval. At this point, that's when the glycolytic pathway begins to kick in, and that's when they're producing more ATP to meet the energy demands from the Wingate test. Okay, so have them explain that to you in order to ensure that they're able to apply the knowledge they learned during lecture into the actual lab portion of the Wingate test, okay? Okay, so now that we have the total number of revolutions, we wanna make sure the students understand how to calculate work output, all right? This is where the workbook pages come into play. In this case, we're gonna calculate work output for each five second interval, all right? In order to ensure they understand how to do this, go ahead and walk them through only one of the intervals. In this case, we'll work with the first five second interval, all right? So to do this, you take the total number of revolutions, in this case it's 12, because that's what we had for the five second interval, times six meters, which is a constant, times kgm, which is the workload, in this case it's 7.5 kgm, times 12, which is another constant, and we divide that by the body weight in kilograms, in this case it's 100. So when you do the math, we end up with 64.80 kgm 
per minute per kilogram. All right, so that's the very first work output. Now that they know how to do this, they're gonna go in and calculate that for each other individual five second interval until they get to that final 30 second time frame. All right, so one thing to make sure they note is that they want to use the numbers in parentheses because that's the number of revolutions within that specific five second time frame. Do not use the first number, use the number in parentheses, okay? Now, the last thing I want to do is know how does this apply to the real world or to our future health and wellness careers, okay? So make sure you give them some examples of maybe strength conditioning coaches, personal trainers, maybe rowers, individuals who want to use the wind aid test or some similar test to understand anaerobic power and anaerobic capacity, specifically understanding how to train more efficiently and how to train for better athletic performance, okay? Because a lot of our students are trying to get into the health and wellness field, specifically working with other athletes, maybe college athletes, high school athletes, but knowing exactly how the Wingate test is a very beneficial way to measure anaerobic power and anaerobic capacity and understanding they themselves, how they can train better to meet higher demands, okay? One quick thing, if for some reason your participant may feel a little bit ill after the test, again, make sure you have a trash can nearby for them. Um, if they feel like they need to go ahead and leave the classroom, that's completely fine just as long as you have somebody else following them to the restroom or wherever they're going to make sure everything's okay. On the off chance, maybe somebody may pass out. That's when you wanna go ahead and lay them down on the floor and elevate their feet on a chair. In this case, we use one of these chairs. But again, these are just protocols on the off chance that this does happen. But again, remember that the chance of this occurring is very, very slim. But just know the protocols that we use in case that any of these events may occur. Okay, so now that we've gone through all the different objectives for today's Wingate test, you wanna make sure you answer any other questions that either the participant may have or the students may have. Make sure your participant feels good physically, mentally, emotionally. How are you feeling? Doing great. Feeling good? Perfect, so he's good there. Answer any other questions that any other student may have and make sure they know exactly why we did the test, how to apply the knowledge both within the classroom and beyond within the health and wellness career as well. And overall, just make sure that everybody understands why we did the Wingate test, okay? So hopefully at this point, all the anxiety, all the stress with the Wingate test is removed and they know exactly why we did the Wingate and how it applies to their overall health and wellness future career, okay? So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.